Welcome to Holtz Academy's Adobe Illustrator for Jewelry Design Demo Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'd like to talk about a few of the topics we're going to cover in our short course here at Holtz Academy. In particular, how Adobe Illustrator can be used in the jewelry design and manufacturing process. As you might have noticed, I'm using Adobe Illustrator CS4 for this demo. This was intentional to demonstrate that while we do cover some techniques only available in CS6, most of the techniques we cover in this course and what I'll be showing you in this tutorial are, can be used in any version of Illustrator from the old version 9 onwards. What I'll be showing you today is something which I would never bother to do in any other type of CAD, 2D or 3D. And that is draw an adjustable chain. We can adjust the size, we can adjust the dimension, and we can apply it to any line we wish. Now, the problem with doing this in 3D CAD is that it would be inefficient as uh, we would have to make the geometry for every single piece. But in Illustrator, we can just quickly and freely draw this and do whatever changes we like to it. Before I go any further, I think it might be a good idea for me to explain exactly what brushes are. Do that a new file here. Now, in Illustrator, there are four types of brushes. You can access the uh, menu for making a new brush by this little menu icon here to the right of the brush menu, where you can find swatches, brush symbols. Click on that. Go to New Brush, and we see we have four types here. We have Calligraphic, Scatter, Art, and Pattern Brushes. Right now, I'm mainly interested in pattern brushes. Uh, I might come back to the Art, Scatter, and Calligraphic at a later time. So taking a look at that. Now, what it's going to do is it allows you to cre create and apply repeating patterns along a line itself. Now, I'll show you an example here. Let's say if I have, say, a circle and I decide to take what is a pattern brush. You can spot them over here in the brush menu because they look like little tiles with various shapes inside them. Make sure the shape is selected and select the pattern brush you want to apply and you'll see it applied to it. Now you see in some cases we'll have special corner tiles that happen in certain key spots. But the general shape of the tile here is usually, I believe, that second one. You'll be able to see how the corner tiles look if you actually try it on a curve shape with corners. So, in order to be able to design, delete these, a pattern brush, I need to actually have a shape to put in the pattern brush menu itself. Just for the sake of simplicity, I'll try a circle. I just found this from the primitive shape menu here. If you don't know how to open this menu, it's simply a matter of clicking and holding on this button and going over here to this little vertical bar and letting go. It creates a tearaway menu, as it's called. Okay, well, making a circle, I'm not terribly, I actually am terribly fussed about the shape here. I want it to be exactly circular. You can do this by holding down the shift key as you drag the circle. And you also want to be conscious of how big your shape is for your tile in the first place. You want it to be some even number that you can actually spot. When we actually do this properly, we'll actually make sure this is an exact measurement in millimeters. But for now, we'll just make it 10 pixels by 10 points. Or, oh, sorry, I mean takes it points by points. So 10 by 10, that should be fine there. For the sake of interest, I'll make sure that the fill color is set to a nice gray swatch. And if you want to, you can actually control the stroke weight thickness of this line itself. This would be the time to do it. I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. And I can determine how thick I want this uh, edging to be. I'll maybe move it down to 0.5 mil, or 0.5 points rather. Measurements throw me whenever I work with Illustrator sometimes. Okay, so we have ourselves a basic simple dot. Now I'm going to make a new brush based upon this dot by having the dot selected, going to New Brush, so that was at the top there, and going to New Pattern Brush. Now I won't need to put anything else in at the moment. Uh, may, uh, later on, uh, we can talk about these remaining fields here, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll mainly just stick on this uh, initial dot here. As it is, all the settings should be fine. Just press OK. Now I can zoom back out by just double clicking on the magnifying glass to get back to 100%. And now my pattern brush is made. All I need to do is just pick a shape and try it out.
And sure enough, works just fine. Now that you've seen how a pattern brush works, let's actually try this on making a chain itself. Close this file down. I'm going to make a new print document, and this time I'm actually going to pay attention to the units I'm actually using for the document. I'm going to make sure they're set to millimeters. This is a standard thing I do for jewelry. Okay. It also might be a good idea at this point to make sure that your ruler is turned on as well. Okay, so that's on now. So now I actually have an idea of scale between this and what I'm going to be working on here. Okay, so now I'm going to make myself a circle just like I did before. But this circle, I'm going to be more picky about its size. I'm holding down shift to keep it even. And then I'm going to check its dimension up here in the top menu. Width and height, let's make them both equal to 10 mil. 10 by 10. Okay, we have that. I'm going to zoom in on it now. Drag a box with the zoom tool to zoom in. Take a good look at that. I might also want to set the swatch to some sort of gray color. We'll just simulate silver just for the sake of argument here. Okay, so now I have one circle for the outside, and I'm actually going to make this look like a chain link. So I'm going to either I'm going to offset it inwards with object path offset. I'm going to offset it inwards by negative two millimeters. Now, when you run the offset command, you actually have a choice of previewing it or not, but if we're sure of what we want to do with it, then it's not a big deal. You just try it out. If you need to, you can always just rerun the command. Okay, so that's giving me an outside and inside. Now, I'm going to actually take the two shapes, and I'm going to cut one from the other to effectively give me a donut with a hole in the middle. I can do this with a command in the window menu called the Pathfinder. So I'll take these two circles together, and I go to this Pathfinder menu, and I'll find the one that allows me to, to subtract one shape from another. If I were to offset this, I'm not saying do this, this is just for the sake of argument here, and I were to do, cut these two against each other, this would be the result. The one in front would cut the one behind. So I'm going to undo that, undo that again. Now if I were to take these two with one inside the other, and I cut them out, then I end up with a shape which has a hole in the middle. So I could actually draw another shape, put it behind, and you'd see it has a hole through, which we can see. This is very important for doing a chain, so it actually makes it look a lot more believable. Okay, we have the link itself for the chain. Now I want this to be an alternating chain link. So I'm going to do a second link, which is going to be sitting as if it were perpendicular, like so. And this would be a good time to also make sure it's the right same dimensions as before. We made the original circle 10 by 10. This will be 10 wide. And then our height, because we have no other frame of reference, can be pretty much whatever we want. I'll make this 2.5 mil thick. Nice, simple, bog standard, alternating uh, jump rings. So I want the two of these to line up now. So I can take the two, and I can use in that same menu as Pathfinder, we have the Align tool. And I'm looking for the one which visually looks like what I want. Vertical Align Center. Should do it just fine. Beautiful. Okay, we have ourselves a pair of chain links. Now, if I were to try and actually take this pair and put it in as a brush, I'll just try it now just to show you, it isn't going to do exactly what I want it to yet. New pattern brush, keep it as it is, and I'll zoom out and try it on any old line here. Let's just try a circle. If I try and apply this to the edge of that, just by clicking on the brush, you'll notice that the pattern is not exactly what we wanted. <clears throat> this is because it's actually tiling the pattern uh, based upon what we have here. What you see is exactly what you get. So we need to design this as if it were a tile rather than just a pair of links. So I need to go back to this now and change it. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to slice this thing in half to keep what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a box here, kind of, and with the help of something called Smart Guides, if they're on here, then it will actually tell you when it finds anchor points or the center of a box or things like that. I'm going to take a point here, right the center. It'll tell me where the center is. You can't really see it very easily. It's in green here, and make a box. Now that box is sitting exactly halfway along this chain link. 
I can just move it down. If it's selected, I could just simply use the arrow keys. A few times, that should do it. And now I can do the same command again in Pathfinder. I believe it's called minus front. These two objects together, you'll need them both. You can select them both by holding down shift. And we can click on minus front. And this will give us half a chain link. Exactly. Great. Now, if I were to tile this pattern, it would still not necessarily give me what I want, but we'll get to that in a second. So I'm going to make a copy of this. Edit, copy. Now there's a version of paste here, but there's actually two other versions as well. In this case, I want paste in front. Because it's going to make an identical copy right on top of the old one. So all I need to do is just then use the arrow keys to move into position. And then with the bounding box and the black arrow, I can rotate it. Shift will help you keep it straight. Beautiful. Not quite perfect, but very close. Okay, now I'm going to take the shape. I'm going to try and make another brush out of it, just to demonstrate a pattern brush. Okay. Closer, but if I apply it to another circle again, I'll just do it here for argument. And I'll maybe, actually maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller. I can actually adjust the stroke weight to make the uh, size of the chain links smaller. Now it's not going to do it by measurement, it's going to do it by multiple. So when I type in a 0.25 point multiple on the stroke weight, it's going to take what was otherwise a 10 mil link and it's going to make it 2.5 mil. Worth, worth remembering for when you're sizing this stuff. Anyway, uh, so it looks like it actually is giving me the repeating pattern I wanted, but for these little line gaps in the middle here. So still not quite what I want. Okay, let's fix it one more time. And the way to fix it, this time I'm going to use the white arrow and I'm going to delete portions of lines. I'm going to select these vertical lines here on either end and use a delete key or backspace of using a Mac to get rid of them. Good. Now I can take this shape and we'll try this one more time. Make a new brush, pattern brush, leave it as it is, and now I'll go back to main screen and I'll make it actual size. Let's try it out one more time. And it looks like, voila, we have ourselves a nice clean and shiny chain. Don't forget to actually turn off the uh, fill on your shape if you want to actually see it as just a chain only. So we're just only seeing the stroke, which is this special pattern. So that's the general idea of how we'd use pattern brush to make a chain. As you can see, there's a whole lot more we can do with it. We can resize it by using the various bounding box features. We can change the color by just clicking on a different uh, color swatch and having the right settings on the pattern brush or we can even change the thickness by changing the stroke weight. We're not even limited to chains for these pattern brushes. As you can see here, we can also apply pattern brushes to wire and create dynamically shaped wire creations in Illustrator that would be much harder to create by any other means. Obviously, this is going to be beyond the scope of this current tutorial, but we talk about this at full length during the ARCAD courses here at Olds Academy. For more information on our Adobe Illustrator for Jewelry Design course, come to holtzacademy.com.